When my dad told me and my siblings that we would be moving to England a few months before my freshman year of high school, um, he delivered it like it was great news that we'd all been waiting to get. Uh, and he was like, it's going to be this amazing adventure. I got a Fulbright teacher exchange and we'll move to Sheffield and um, live, you know, we'll, we'll learn a new culture and hike in the Yorkshire Dales and maybe even travel around Europe. Isn't this exciting? And my first reaction was, this feels like a study abroad that you should have gotten out of your system in college. <laughs> Not like something that you need to be schlepping your family across the Atlantic for, and especially not right now. Like, I'm 15. I have spent 15 painstaking years cultivating a specific persona that blends in to the ecosystem that I'm in right now, and that's Portland, Oregon in 1990. And it, it was very calculated to that. And so I felt like if you took me out of that and put me in another school, really anywhere else, let alone a place I had never heard of before, that I might not survive. Um, like an orchid that you buy at Trader Joe's and take home and it dies immediately. <laughs> so this wasn't great news for me. I, I tried to bargain a little bit. I was like, I'm 15. Like, we have, I have three siblings. Do you really need me there? I, I could stay home. Um, I offered to live at my friend Kara's house. And my parents were like, no, we're going. You're going you, you, to love it. You'll thank us later. Um, I double-checked with Kara's parents, and they also said no. So I had to go. Um, so I was a very prepared kid. I got straight A's. I was um, a little bit anxious. I had a mild um, sleep disorder, you know. So I was like very uh, focused, and I thought, okay, I'm going to make lemons out of lemonade, and I'm going to, I'm going to do school in England right. Um, the problem is, this was 1990. It was pre-internet. I didn't know anything about Sheffield, England. I all that I really knew about England at all was Princess Diana, and I was embarrassed about that fact, too. I was like, well, I'm smart. I should know things, but I really just pictured an entire country of women wearing skirt suits. And so I was like, I, you know, I've got to do some uh, investigation so that I know how to fit in in my new school. So I thought, oh, I know where, you know, I know where the source of record is. It's the local newspaper. So I wrote a letter to the editor of the local newspaper in Sheffield, England, and I asked them all my questions. Um, what, are, what are British kids like? What do they wear? What do they eat? Um, and I, <laughs> I got a, a very nice, thorough, and patient letter back from this man named Bill Saunders, who worked at the newspaper, and he said, I think you'll find British kids are very curious about life in the United States, and you'll have lots of friends, and as to what to wear, it's informal, just jeans and sneakers are fine. And, and I took this letter, and I, it's in my scrapbook, so, you know, it was important to me. And this was really about all the information I had about my new home, um, other than someone had told us that right before we moved there, there was a terrible um, massacre at a soccer field where 95 people were crushed to death. Um, so I knew that as well. Um, so... I mean, I was walking in very, very blind, um, but you know, I, I mustered up all of my uh, optimistic attitude, and I showed up for the first day of school in what would have been just an ideal first day of school outfit in America. And if you recall first day of school outfits, they're, they're critical. Um, and this was gonna be the first moment that all of my new classmates would see me and see, you know, who's this, uh, girl, is she, you know, is she fun? Is she approachable? Is she, you know, are we going to be best friends? Um, and I, so I felt pretty confident about this, this outfit until I got to school. Um, I walked onto the schoolyard and, and I'd practiced walking to school as well. So I knew exactly how long it would take and what it would look like when I walked onto the schoolyard. Except for on the first day of school, there were actually students there. So it did look different. And the first thing that I noticed was everybody looked 10 to 15 years older than me. 
And so for a second, I was like, am I at the right place? I did practice walking here. I look at the school. It's Tapton Secondary School. That's, that's where I'm supposed to be. But for sure, everyone looks way older. And not just in their looks, but in their way of being. Everyone was, um, some kids were smoking. And other ones had, like, you know, their hands in each other's back pockets. And there's a lot of um, just, like, teenage vibes that I hadn't grown into yet. And the worst part was that I noticed nobody was wearing anything like what I had on. And also, if you know about first day outfits, you want there to be a little bit of crossover. Like, if you're wearing the same shirt or the shoes as your friend, like, that's that's good thing. Um, unfortunately, I was wearing what was in vogue at the time, a fuchsia mock turtleneck t-shirt from The Gap, a white sweater vest, very tight guest jeans with zippers at the bottom, fuchsia socks to match my fuchsia shirt, and white Keds just out of the box. So, so I'm walking in just like, this is, you know, like this would kill at my American high school. Unfortunately, the style there was very dark. I saw no colors brighter than a navy blue. So, so it was like black and, he and big t-shirts and uh, baggy Levi's jeans and Doc Martens. And you know, this is like just coming out of the 80s in Yorkshire, England. I didn't know this at the time, but it looked like a Smiths concert, you know? And like, it, uh, it, was, it was daunting. So I thought, I, I, the best that I can do is just walk with purpose across this uh, field until I get to the front door and no one notices me. So I'm walking, I'm walking, and then I hear, Oi, is that the American? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Maybe there's another one. Okay, keep going. <laughs> uh, like, I'm walking, and then I hear another, Oi, Oi, American, Yankee, are you the Yankee? Are you the wanker? You're the fucking wanker Yankee. Fuck you, Yankee. <laughs> and it was so much more aggressive than I could have ever imagined. So like my worst fears were coming true times a million. And I got in the school and I just, kept my head down for the rest of the day and I got through it. But you know that, those feelings in high school when you're like, well, I'm gonna die here. I'm, I'm gonna die in the middle of this, this school eating my like sausage uh, biscuit, whatever the hell they had for lunch. So I came home that day and I was very, very sad about how the, the inevitability of the rest of this year and my mom gave me um, a plate of chocolate cookies. They called them digestive biscuits. Um, and I, I ate one, and then I ate two, and then I ate the rest of the sleeve. And I went upstairs, and I turned on the television, and I started watching this Australian soap opera called Home and Away. And I became enamored with uh, their ways, New South Wales. Kylie Minogue was on that show. Anyway, I turned into, like, I went into this depression. And day after day, it was sort of like, go to school, kids yell at me, come home, eat a sleeve of biscuits, watch Home and Away, you know. And it was uh, not good. Until one day in my business studies class, I'm sitting there sulking. And this girl named Karen leans over to me, and she goes, did you know that Emma and Gemma are pissed right now? And I was like, at me? And she goes, no, the drunk, the drinking gin and tonics out of a water bottle. And I was like, oh, well, that's, t wow, crazy. Uh, so she and I started to bond over this scandal of girls getting drunk in the school. And then later that day, a boy named Ian came up to me and he asked about my Nike shoes and we bonded over that. And then later that week, another girl named Catherine talked to me and suddenly I started to make friends. Not, not the cool kids and not the, uh, you know, not the types of friends that I had at home, but I, I, I found my place. And in the end, I didn't learn a lesson. Um, I left, I crossed out every entry in my journal from early in the year when I was optimistic and in red and was like, ha ha, not. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, you know, I do look back on that year. My parents weren't wrong. I would have regretted not going. It, 
it opened my eyes to the world and made me realize that fitting in is a little bit overrated. Thanks. Yeah.